Hello everyone and welcome back to Ree's Retro Toys. Now I know it's been a while, but that doesn't mean I haven't stopped hunting for those awesome vintage toys. On this episode, I'm going to show you what I've picked up over the last couple of months at the various vintage toy shops that I've gone to since it's winter and I'm not really able to get out to the flea market. So I like to rely on those awesome vintage toy shops, locally owned, and support them. So let's get to it. This is my vintage toy collection update number two. So the first round of toys comes from Time Traveler Toys and Collectibles in downtown Winchester, Virginia. I got this guy. This is the 1997 Next Mutation Splinter. Um, any Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle fan will tell you that this is definitely their least favorite incarnation of the Ninja Turtles, even below the Michael Bay version of the Ninja Turtles. So, but I still collect the line. Um, I, I don't seek it out, but if I find it, I will definitely pick it up if I don't have the figure. And I found uh, the Splinter. And then I found these five Shadow Strikers figures. These guys were released uh, by Kenner in 1990. And the concept behind these figures is that they were supposed to be invisible and they would have color changing features. These figures came with see-through vehicles as well. And you could see the inside detail uh, of the mechanics behind the, the vehicles and um, air, aircraft they were flying. I did not have any of these Shadow Strikers in my collection. And then I found this lot of 1989 Mattel Computer Warriors. Evil viruses are attacking the world's computers and the computer warriors have been generated to stop them. A soccer trophy changes into an evil techno tank, forcing the computer warriors down. Hiding in a Pepsi can, the computer warriors fight back and deliver a direct hit. But the viruses keep coming, so the computer warriors convert a clock into a digital laser blaster and wipe out the virus air attack. Yeah! Computer warriors, expect the unexpected. Each sold separately. Computer and pencil sharpener available fall 1990, only from Mattel. These figures came with play sets. Uh, transforming play sets to be exact that look like everyday objects but would transform into kind of like a um, computerized battle station. Uh, the concept behind these toys were that these computer warriors would fight against the viruses that come to invade all of your computers and electronic devices and they would wage war on each other. There was a, a cartoon based on it released on VHS in 1990 um, so, I think it's on YouTube. Uh, check it out if you haven't seen it already. I also found this Rest Q Guardian GoBots figure. So he goes from Heroic Guardian to Ambulance, just like that. So the next round of vintage toys comes from a seller on Mercari. Mercari is a selling app similar to eBay, uh, but a lot of people are kind of gravitating towards that because I guess they have uh, fewer fees than eBay. My buddy Chad tipped me off to these guys being on there and I hurriedly went on there and scooped them up. If you watched my channel before, you know I'm a big GoBots fan, which means I'm also a huge Rock Lords fan. Can imagine a rock lord world where the forces of good and evil are fighting to survive, each sold separately. Rock lords! Rock lords, rock vehicles, rock gnarlies, and rockosaurs, each sold separately. New from Tonka! So let me show you what I found. So I got this gnarly lizard. He is a part of the rock lords gnarly line. Uh, they're almost kind of like accessory figures to the regular rock lords. These guys don't transform, but have... Uh, wheels on the bottom, pull back wheels, you pull them back and then they fly forward. And this is the first of the small version of the Gnarlies that I've been able to find for my collection. I also have the large Snarly Gnarly, which is pretty rare. Then I bought Stonehook. He is a part of the Shock Rocks series of Rock Lords that came out around 1986. Um, they didn't have a, a huge distribution, um, so they're pretty rare. There's three in these series. Uh, but this is Stonehook, and you can see he's a pretty evil, wicked-looking figure with a, those red eyes, almost like a Knight Rider there. Kind of the slit, uh, slit of red for his 
eyes. Then I found this incredibly rare Stun Stone. He's a part of the Action Shock Rocks series that came after the normal Shock Rocks. And uh, I think a lot of these only had European releases, so they didn't make it to the States very often. So I was extremely excited to find him. Um, they have these little buttons on the bottom and they just kind of snap together. I hit the button and they pop open like that. I also found his little brother, Dragonstone. Um, again, he's a part of the Action Shock Rock series. There's a little tail back there. And uh, these are extremely rare. I was absolutely ecstatic to find these guys on Mercari because they very seldom come up even on eBay to buy. Uh, so I am forever in debt to my buddy Chad for pointing these out. Thanks, buddy. This next batch of goodies comes to you from Time Capsule Toys in Girard, Ohio. The owner, Rick, had a phenomenal Black Friday sale just for a couple hours in his store, uh, I think from 10 to midnight. Everything was 35% off the sticker price. So my dad and I uh, made it there and came away with a few very nice items. I got this 1987 adorable Adrian Adonis figure from uh, the WWF LJN Superstars line. Um, he's in very good condition for his age and the style of figure because uh, the LJN toys were just solid pieces of rubber with paint on them. So um, you can see his eye makeup there. There's a little bit of wear on his hair, but other than that, he's in really good condition and I did not have him in my LJN collection. So now I do. Then I got this 1992 uh, Bodacious Birthday Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. This is Raph the Magnificent. Shh. Surprise! Oh, what a surprise! Oh, open your present! Yeah, it's Raph the Magnificent! Hey, the rabbit pops up! Here's another one! Yeah, yeah. open mine! No mine! It's Crazy Clown and Mike! Wow, extend the legs! Oh. Open this one, dude! Come on! Oh, it's Party Reptile Leo! What does he do? Yeah! <laughs> Bodacious birthday turtles! Just what I've always wanted! Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles! Um, he is mint on card, as you can see. Uh, they only made three of the birthday turtles. They made Crazy Clown and Mike and Classic Reptile Party Leo as well. They did not make a uh, Donatello figure uh, for the birthday series. Um, but what was cool about these cards, first of all, the artwork. I know the concept is kind of goofy, but the artwork on these Ninja Turtle cars, cards were just uh, fantastic, in my opinion. But you could... Put your little birthday message there if you were gifting it to a son or a nephew or whoever on their birthday. And then here is uh, the back of the card as well with his profile bio card. Then I found this great piece from my Star Wars collection. This is the Vintage Ewok Village action playset from uh, Return of the Jedi. This was released in 1983 by Kenner, of course. And uh, this is 100% complete with the box. Of course, uh, the box is open. I have it set up in my other room, which I will show you in a second. And it even came with the instructions on how to put this wonderful play set together. It's Ewok Village. I must see my friends. Let's set. I'll get them. Dear me, what a close call. It's C-3PO, new Logre and Ewok Village playset. Action figures, each sold separately. You have to put it together. I'm Logre, the Ewok medicine man. Ewok Village playset from Star Wars Return of the Jedi collection. Action figures sold separately. New from Kenner. So here is the loose, complete Ewok Village playset. I have this set up um, out in my other room, and I also have my Wicked plush next to it, so don't mind him, he is not vintage, but uh, I love me some Ewoks. So here's the play set. There's the cargo net up underneath there, and the uh, elevator, of course, that you would wind up there. And here's the whole top. There's the, the fire pit as well as the uh, restraints that you could put your figures on, like they were cooking Han and Luke and Chewie. And there's the battle drum. 
the chair that they put C-3PO on, uh, thinking that he was a god, of course. And there's three posts with holes to put the Ewoks in or, or whoever. Um, again, this is just a fantastic playset. And if you know anything about vintage Star Wars toys, uh, you will know that they repurposed this playset in 1991-92 time frame uh, for the Robin Hood Prince of Thieves uh, playset. And the last batch of toys comes to you from the great guys at d and &E Collectibles just outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I was able to stop there over the Christmas holiday when I was visiting my family up there and came away with some fantastic vintage items. First, I found this uh, transforming robot watch. Uh, no, this is not an official GoBot. It is not an official Transformers figure. Um, it is just a kind of cheap knockoff China version of um, a transforming watch. Um, they show the blue one there on the package, but I actually have the red one. Um, it comes with the box. The box has been opened, but um, even to see this survive, probably from the mid 80s, I'm guessing this is probably around 85, 86 this came out. I don't see a copyright date on it or I'd let you know. Um, but uh, I got this for 10 bucks. Uh, I, I kind of remember having this as a kid. Um, so that's what uh, piqued my interest in this item. I also found this complete with box Super GoBots Warpath figure. Uh, this is an enemy a renegade Super GoBot. Uh, this is from 1985. Um, they have these flip open boxes uh, where you can see the figure inside. There's some tear there, uh, but to have it with the box, 100% complete with his blades, which uh, obviously would go missing a lot because they detach. This will go great in my GoBots collection. Now, very rarely do I find anything to add to my WWF Hasbro collection, uh, because right now I'm still only missing the red card Undertaker, uh, the one with the cloth coat with him. There are some accessories that I don't have yet. So, when I saw this guy, I just had to have him. This is the complete Macho King Randy Savage with his crown and his scepter. Um, these obviously got lost very frequently back in the day, and it's hard to find them 100% uh, complete like this. And uh, Macho King here, he's in a really good shape for his age too. This is Macho King on the back there. Um, and his action still works, of course. This is definitely my favorite line of wrestling figures to collect. Um, these are the ones that I played with as a kid mostly, and I just absolutely adore these. So I, even though I had this figure already, I didn't have the accessories, so, and now I do. Red 5 standing by. Here is the 100% complete vintage X-Wing fighter uh, from Kenner Toys in 1978. Here's the new Star Wars X-Wing fighter. And the Star Wars TIE Fighter. Spaceships and Luke Skywalker sold separately, batteries not included. I'll get you this time, Luke. Reactivate X-Wing. Both have flashing lights and sound. A hit. There go the solar panels. And George Vader's got away. The Force is with me. Luke Skywalker wins again. Kenner's Star Wars X-Wing Fighter, TIE Fighter, and action figures all sold separately. Uh, the guys at D&E really hooked me up with this because... I already had the four cannons that go on the wings here, and also the canopy. So all I really needed was a shell, just a shell of an X-wing. I didn't need, I didn't need it complete at all, because um, I already had the hard-to-find accessories for it. So uh, the guy actually went to the basement of their facility and found uh, the best-looking shell X-wing that they had, and sold it to me for ten bucks. So I was extremely thrilled. To find this. Um, I know an X-Wing is pretty common in Star Wars collecting, but I just haven't come across one yet um, other than the accessories. I found the accessories first before I found the actual X-Wing, so um, excited to finally have this bad boy in my collection. And my absolute favorite find uh, from my visit to D&E Collectibles is this phenomenal decomposed figure from the 1986 Hasbro 
in humanoids line. The humanoid decomposed turns living things into fiendish creatures. He's got dirt! I'm going after that zombie! Humanoids! Humanoids! The evil that lies within and other figures sold separately from Hasbro. Uh, this is the third giant and humanoids figure that they produced. Um, you can see over here I have my Metlar and Tendril and all I needed was Decompose to complete that horrific trifecta of gigantic mutant monsters. And so Decompose is very very cool looking you can see he's almost like a uh, skeleton bird he even has a little puffed of hair that sticks out there and um, his rib cage opens up where you can put the figures and this is even kind of squishy it's kind of like a soft uh, rubbery material and he of course has uh, the open plastic there that you can shine the light on and then the tip of his beak would light up as well. So um, he is just a fantastic figure. They just don't make toys like this anymore. Um, you gotta wonder how many kids would get freaked out and have nightmares over this figure these days. But um, I'm super, super stoked to have him in my collection now. So that's it folks, that is my vintage toy collection update number two. Uh, I've still been busy going to these toy stores and scouring eBay and Mercari, as you can see, and I'm still coming away with some fantastic items. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Be sure to hit that like button if you did and subscribe to my channel for all of your vintage toy hunting needs. Thank you for watching and keep on hunting. Searching for the end of the line, yeah.